as we wrap up another week with Ramblings with Rebecca, happy Friday. Um, we're also wrapping up our look at human rights, uh, particularly as they enter into international law. With the last three days, we've been more focused on disclassifying rights um, along the first, second, and third generations than we have really the international legal instruments around them. So we're going to take a bit more of a focused look at those today. Firstly, international human rights law is a fairly big and pretty constantly expanding part of law. There are many, many treaties that have human rights elements. Um, some of them are not explicitly human rights treaties, right, but may make reference to rights to yada, 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 and, and or cross-reference other treaties. There's also then, though, quite a big body of explicitly human rights treaties. In addition to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, which deals with our first generation, and the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, which deals with our second generation, and we talked about those briefly Tuesday and Wednesday, we have kind of more subject-specific treaties, like the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, or the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, or the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman, or Degrading Treatment or Punishment. There's also the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearance. Tons of things, some of them kind of about one specific issue and trying to really get that firmed up. Others about widespread groups that need special kinds of protections perhaps for their rights. These kind of things. Um, so we have seven treaties that have active complaint mechanisms in international law, uh, and then a lot of other <laughs> treaties um, that have adopted and have human rights elements to them and are part of the universal human rights systems, but don't necessarily have active mechanisms for enforcement that individuals can push for. As we talked about last week, international law is based on consent and is very much driven by states' consent. This is a bit tricky then when it comes to human rights because states are only bound if they agree to be bound. And furthermore, because the international legal system is focused on the relations between, well, nations, the role of an individual in, human, in, um, in international law is somewhat tricky. Historically, they haven't really had a voice or been considered actors. Human rights as a legal regime needed to figure out a way to deal with that. So what they've done is set up often optional protocols to all of the treaties, although sometimes they're part of the treaties themselves. A protocol in international law is a secondary treaty um, that's kind of attached or related to a main treaty that generally is around a specific enforcement mechanism. But people, and when I say people, what I really mean is states, states can be parties to a treaty, but not parties to its optional protocol. Or its protocol um, happens a lot that a state will sign on to yes this declaration or this covenant sounds great it's beautiful hurrah let's not discriminate against this group of people along comes an optional protocol that gives that group of people a complaint mechanism through which they can point fingers at the state and the state says oh no we're not signing on to that uh, however <laughs> for those treaties that do have active complaint mechanisms Generally, the system is that an individual, when they feel their rights have been violated, is first required to go through all domestic remedies. So do whatever their home state allows them to as far as going through the, the domestic courts, appealing to perhaps a regional body, um, but particularly within the state. Um, doing whatever they can do. If they've exhausted all domestic remedies and feel like their right has still been violated and they haven't had any kind of redress for it, they can essentially write a letter to the appropriate UN committee or committee set up by the treaty body. A person has to choose which treaty to file under, so they can't file under against both the Convention on Rights with Persons with Disabilities and the Convention of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. You have to choose one. So go with whichever right you feel is really, really violated. Send it in. The relevant committee will look through it, decide if it's admissible, decide whether or not your right has been violated, etc. And then make recommendations to the state based on that. More or less, there are, of course, nuances. The UN has some really great resources on how an individual can go about doing that. There are also regional mechanisms in most places that individuals can entreat to with more or less the same kind of setup. 